where uh, KwaZulu Natal MEC for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Numusa Dube Nube, is there to discuss the recent audit outcomes in KwaZulu Natal's municipalities and the impact it has on the citizens of the province. Peter, good morning to you. Leanne, thank you very much indeed and a very warm welcome to you all if you've just joined us. Yeah, we're in Durban today and uh, in fact we're not too far away from Kingshaka International Airport. It's a very beautiful part of the country and this is the scene for the latest in the series of New Age business briefings uh, brought to you by the SABC and today kindly sponsored by JIC Mining and as you heard there from Leanne, we'll be talking today to the MEC for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Ambassador Nomsa Dube Nube. And uh, the question is, why on earth are we doing this? Well, at the end of last year, the Auditor General, Kimi Mokotu, uh, released the National and Provincial Audit Outcomes of Government uh, Departments and Public Entities for 2013-2014. And uh, when he released these, uh, 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 this report, he said, look, you know, generally, our public entities are moving in the right direction. We're doing better. The trend is that we're doing better. But he did emphasize that there were some areas of concern. And uh, as usual, Gauteng, Western Cape, they came through as the uh, top performing uh, provinces. But uh, perhaps what you might not have gotten as headlines was that KwaZulu-Natal also has done very, very well. Um, in fact, as a highlight sort of figure, uh, 20 municipalities got clean audits in that particular report, and that's compared with seven the previous year. So that's a huge jump, a huge shift in terms of uh, a, sh a movement towards uh, uh, better and cleaner administrations. And I guess the question is, how did they do this? What did they do? And what are they doing right that perhaps the rest of the country could uh, learn from? And the, and the reason, and maybe you might be even asking, what is the point of having clean audits? Is it just so that um, we are happy that money is not being stolen, or is there a bigger picture? Well, to help us answer these questions, we have the ambassador, uh, uh, the MEC for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Ambassador Nomsa Dwayne Thank you very much for joining us, and to welcome to the program. Thank you, Peter. Um, uh, good morning to all the viewers at home and uh, good morning to my colleagues here. We have uh, my colleagues, the mayors and the chief executive um, and municipal managers, um, CFOs that are present here this morning. Um, indeed, um, like our former president, uh, Nelson Mandela, um, said um, that uh, it is always impossible until uh, it is done. Um, we've done it as Gozul Natal achieving 20 um, clean audits uh, with 61 municipalities that we have and compared with the previous years. Um, again, Peter, uh, I want to say that um, it was the first time in the life of mm. this dispensation government that 20 audits are achieved. Um, mm. If you look at from um, 1994 and um, 2000 um, or 2009, um, coming up to 2015, um, that's where uh, we have traveled. We, until 2012, we never had a single, um, uh, you know, 2012, yeah, we had seven um, clean audits and now we are at 20, um, which is, um, we think it's a really good achievement uh, from our side, working with the mayors, of course, um, municipal managers and uh, chief financial officers. All right, so what, what did you do? Uh, seven a year before, up to 20, and we're not even talking really yet about those that perhaps were disclaimers that have moved into another area of uh, better performance, sort of um, qualified to unqualified, <coughs> excuse me. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you've done, uh, put into place, programs, interventions that have made all the difference in such a short space of time? Well, I'll say in summary that um, the good cooperation that we have with um, our municipalities has made us to achieve what we have achieved. Um, the good leadership of mayors uh, at the top who set the tone um, have made it possible to be where we are. Um, we have indeed put uh, programs in place, the capacity building programs uh, for our councillors. Um, we've had to ensure that uh, we 
uh, make our mayors know and councillors know what kind of questions they should ask our municipal managers. We had to make sure that we have a table that say on the daily basis what kind of information you should be receiving, on the monthly basis what kind of information you should be receiving. If you're not receiving that information, what are the implications? We've had to really like have a day-to-day -day like a blueprint of from day one of the end of financial year um, to the other side of the beginning of the financial year, what is it that um, has got to be done. Um, the other thing that we had to do is to put measures in place for um, consequences because that's been the main issue. With us as politicians, of course we're not accountants, of course we're not engineers, but there are people that are paid to do that. There are people that are employed to do just that, to make sure that they do things by the book. They must be professional in their approach. Um, their attitude must be towards ensuring that we have clean governance. Um, we have corrupt-free um, institutions uh, out there because that's what our people expect of us. So we had to ensure that um, people that are not giving us good uh, books uh, or clean audits, uh, my mayors, they know I need the love letters, I need proof that people have been disciplined, I need proof that um, those things that have not been done correct um, are being corrected because if we leave it then it just continue. Um, people just get away with things when they are actually supposed to be doing right. The one other thing that we had to do is to enforce the culture um, of professionalism but also ensure that we have skilled and personnel to deal um, with the things that we have to deal with. Um, you, you know, um, you've got to put a plumber um, to do the work that uh, he's employed for, and you've got to have um, the financial officer to be skilled and to be professional in his conduct. Municipal managers say so. Those are some of the key areas that um, we had to. Uh, concentrates on, as I said, the mayors setting the tone on the top, mm -hmm. but also the mayors knowing what is it mm -hmm. that they need to do. All right, so we're going to hear a little bit from the mayors that are here, kind of what assistance they have gotten and the kind of assistance that they need to continue to make these improvements. When you go onto your website, it states that, in fact, it's the second one, key strategic objectives, the achievement of clean audits. Why is getting clean audits such a heavy focus. I mean, why should Jabu Sitole Mkloti worry about uh, his mm -hmm. municipality getting a, a clean audit? Well, it's because if you get a clean audit, it means you are on target. It means you are achieving what you have set yourself to achieve. Municipalities have got the business plans um, our communities expect us to deliver services. I always say municipalities are no longer just about water and lights. Municipalities must grow their economies. Municipalities must create jobs. And as we get audited on our performance, if we set our performance target to say, this is what we want to achieve, and we spend the money where we said we want to spend our monies on, it means the person um, on the other side, when we said we're going to uh, make sure that uh, we give water to that particular community, it means we have done it, mm -hmm. and we've done it up to the book. We've spent the money where we wanted it to be spent, we achieve our targets on time, and this is what clean audit is about. So we, we, we don't want to see books being clean, um, but the roads are with potholes mm. and the people, um, you know, protesting. We're saying there has to be a direct translation of that good governance uh, with service delivery, and that's how we have done it. And, and we, we are very happy to say, even when you go to that municipality that has achieved clean audit, you could see the culture, you first see the leadership. Before you can even say anything, you can see that, okay, this is clean. Oh, no, this is not clean. So um, it's, it, it all follows um, your conduct, um, your attitude, uh, your discipline to, to good governance, um, but the way you deal with the issues um, of uh, responding um, to the people's needs because we are about uh, uh, you know, improving the lives of our people out there. Uh, we are about ensuring that in each and every space where people are, there is service delivery, and that's what we're trying to achieve. While KZN, you, you would know, and Eastern Cape, we're still behind 
uh, in terms of service delivery. Mm. So as municipalities, we are charged mm. with that responsibility of reaching every part of our country, no matter how mm. far the people are from the services, we have to reach there All as right. municipalities. So, so what you're saying is that there's a direct relationship between clean audits and service delivery. So chances are that those municipalities that are getting clean audits, they're getting them because they're doing the right things and doing them properly. Exactly. Okay, all right. So one of the things that keeps coming up, and, and I think a lot of people haven't asked the question, and perhaps in, in layman's terms, if you can help us, what does a clean audit mean? Qualified audit, unqualified disclaimer. Um, what do all these things mean so that we can get an understanding of you know, when we say we've got 20 of mm. 61 municipalities with clean audits, uh, but then there's another 40 odd. Mm. Are they bad or wh where are they? Where are they sitting? Well, um, clean audit is, is, is a clean audit. Um, it means that the Auditor General was satisfied that one, your key performance indicators that you've set for yourself, your your um, IDP um, uh, is, 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 is tallied uh, or is a mirror of your budget. Your budget has been spent, the monies have been spent where they were supposed to be spent. There is a clear accountability of how those monies were spent because what the Auditor General do, if you say um, you are going to uh, build a market, they go sometimes and see whether the market is there and then they see how much you spend and how much you budgeted for that and whether you were able to account for each and every stage of that project that you wanted to build. Now, if you look at um, the um, uh, unqualified audit uh, opinion, as we say, um, you would find that um, um, the books um, are clean and um, there might be um, questions that you might be needing to answer. Maybe you didn't provide um, evidence um, of your performance. And of course, a qualified audit it means that your book are not in order. Um, there are financial misstatements sometimes. Um, your information might not be reliable sometimes. Um, sometimes you had to correct things. The Auditor General had to ask you questions before um, you could get things right. Mm. Um, and then, of course, um, we've got um, adverse opinion um, and a disclaimer where really the Auditor General cannot express opinion on those uh, books. And we, we, we always um, are having a very difficulty um, if people have got the adverse mm. and, and, and uh, disclaimers because it means those people that have been charged with the responsibility of doing those books, of ensuring that money is kept correctly, there is financial accountability. They just did not do what they expected to do. All right, so we've got 61 municipalities, and, and, I, and also I think what people don't understand, KwaZulu-Natal has got the most number of municipalities. Yeah. So the burden of compliance is much greater with yes. you just by sheer number. So 61 in total, 20 clean audits. What is the story with the other 40? Are they in a bad situation? Where are we? Have, have we seen improvement even in those areas? Of course, we have seen a great improvement in our municipalities. Um, one of the greatest challenges we have in Guazulu Natal is that the majority of our municipalities um, are rural-based municipalities, which means that um, there's not enough revenue um, to raise uh, from those municipalities. And with the rates of unemployment and with the um, capacity to raise uh, enough skilled personnel and to do the work. That is uh, part of our challenge, um, to attract people. Um, that is why we have to build relations with various stakeholders. The Auditor General's um, office, um, we've been working uh, very close with them. They've been assisting us with the South African um, Institute of Chartered Accountants. We've had to get uh, in interns to come and assist our municipalities. We've had to get municipalities to good put people to be trained um, as, a, as chartered accountants, as chief financial officers. Uh, we've had to work with our treasury, both national treasury and the provincial treasury. We work with the office of the premier, um, as well as ourselves, to ensure that all of us 
um, are setting that tone at the top, uh, ensuring that uh, our municipalities are getting cooperation. Because, Peter, one thing that I need to say that as municipalities, we're working in a very difficult environment in that we have national government, we have provincial government, and unless those spheres of government play their part, because you'll find that in one municipality, um, we're expecting to get monies um, from national treasury, or we're expecting to get money from Department of Water. And if they don't transfer those monies in time, and we've set the targets, we've got to take money and divert it to that project. And that causes on its own us to misalign the way we have budgeted and the way we've set our IDP, which is still a challenge in ensuring that the IDPs of municipalities um, is known at the national um, at government uh, level, it's known at the provincial, but not that it's known, it is factored into the business plan of those spheres of government. All right, okay, we're going to have to take a quick break now, but what I'd like to do now is uh, open up the conversation to the audience that's here and also you at home. And don't forget the Twitter handle is at MorningLiveSABC, hashtag TNA Biz Brief. If you'd like to pose a question, perhaps you're in another part of the country and you're saying, what is KZN doing well that we could learn from you or if you've got suggestions? And if you are in KZN, well, your MEC is here and she'll answer your questions right after this. Stay with us.